Episode 3, the ATD Baseball Podcast. Myself and Kyle today. Let me. I'm just going to come out of the gate and say this. I didn't watch a lick of baseball this weekend. Uh, shout out to the Kings and Lakers. I was busy with playoff games over the weekend attending, which I never thought that happened. But yeah. um, how you doing, Kyle? I'm doing good. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's it's been going. It's been going good. Um, yeah, your Lakers and your Lakers and Kings got you busy, man. Yeah, uh, Kings disappointed me last night, but I'm still two for one on the weekend. I'll take it. Um, we got some stuff that we got to talk about, and here I say that after I haven't seen anything, but <laughs> we're gonna do the best I can. Uh, today we're gonna be talking Pirates. And Drew Maggie, who will be making his Major League debut, but there's some – it's not your regular Major League debut. Let's just put it that way. The yeah, Rays, yeah. who continue to win baseball games, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's great for – it's great to see it from my end, but I know probably Kyle and Bobby don't like that to start off the season. And then my Dodgers will give you your Dodgers update. I got a – Got a twisted little fun thing that we can get into that I'm gonna say, but yeah, wait, yeah, and then we'll kind of preview some look ahead to some series coming up this weekend, which there, there's some good ones, uh, most of them are bad, but we got some good ones sprinkled in there, so let, let's let's get it started then. Let's... All right, yeah, so I personally I want to start with the pirates here, right? It's fine, so... yeah. I, I think the Pirates have to be the biggest surprise of 2023 thus far. Um, I mean, we all know the Rays are killing it, but I still, like, nobody expected this kind of start out of Pittsburgh. It's, for me, it's honestly been such, a, like, a breath of fresh air, uh, just as a baseball fan. I mean, I mean, just seeing this team go from what they were the past however many seasons and, you know, fans constantly asking for their owners to do something. And they put a product on the field and they are producing. And it's such it's it's so nice to see. It is, and they're doing this without their shortstop, O'Neill Cruz, who is yep. gonna be out for months, which that sucks. But I I said this a couple weeks ago in the overreaction Mondays that I do. You know, th- they're off to this hot start. Now I think you and I can both agree that eventually they're they're gonna they're gonna go back to reality a little bit. Yeah. They're not gonna. I, they might. They're not gonna lose 110 games anymore. But they're not gonna do anything dangerous. But I could be wrong, and I really hope I am. But they're not a pushover team anymore. They're not. They're not three guaranteed wins on the schedule anymore. As of right now, like I said, that could change. A month from now, they could be, you know, below 500, and again, they're a pushover team. But for right now, it's like fans are into it over there. They're showing up. They're playing well. This is this is what the Oakland A's don't do. You want your fans to show up, you put a good product on the field. And I, I'm happy to see this for Pittsburgh. I really am. Yeah, no, it, it, I mean, you said it perfectly. I mean, seeing this team go from what it was to what it is now, I mean – and yes, we're not expecting this team to go out and make a push in the postseason. But I would, I would love to see this team ruffle some feathers when wild card races start to dwindle down. I want the Pirates up there in the wild card, fighting for a spot, and may, I don't know, maybe knocking off one of these top teams in the in the NL. I, I, I hope I'm right on this, but I, I really don't see it happening. Uh, but I think for the Pirates. One of the biggest things that really gave him a push, I feel like is Andrew McCutcheon. I mean, he is producer. And it's 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 something that every baseball fan wanted to see. Everybody wanted to see that reunion. And now that it's here and he's producing on the field and being that veteran presence that these young guys need, such as Key Brian Hayes, uh, Brian Reynolds, all those guys. And O'Neill Cruz, when he comes back, I think just having him back – in the Berg is such a nice, it's such a nice sight. It is. It it really is. You know, let's uh, like I said, let's let's see if they can continue. It. And yeah. you know, here I am giving them praise and happy for them. Uh, the Dodgers have a three game set coming up against them starting tomorrow. So I hope that you know 
we do what we're supposed to do and win a couple of these games, <laughs> but that's that hasn't been a guarantee either. But shout out to Pittsburgh. You guys deserve it. Hopefully this is something you can build off of in the next coming years. So that was nice yeah. to see. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think uh, to kind of close out on the Pirates here, uh, they called up Drew Maggie. Um, he's currently 33 years old. Uh, he has played a total of 1,155 games in the minors with a whopping 4,494 plate appearances, all with all in the minor league system. And he's finally getting that call up. I really hope he does well. <laughs> I hope he I do too, like. Man. I hope he, you know, gets a couple knocks, maybe a home run here and there, and he proves to the organization that hey, I should have been up here years ago, but I'll take my opportunity now. It's uh, exactly. This has happened before with other guys where they they're in the minors forever, or even in other sports like in basketball, they're in the G League forever, and then they finally oh. come up. And I, I think the one thing this guy's got on his side is that when these guys get their opportunities, some of them do make the most of it. Yeah. I don't have I don't have players off the top of my head, but once in a while you get a cool story like this, and they 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 come up and they actually do produce. So we'll see yeah. if this kid, this guy, can do the same. Yeah, and this this reminds me a lot of what the Phillies did with Mark Appel last year. I mean, every baseball fan knows the story about Mark Appel. Um, it's it's a terrible story for him, but I mean, he got his kind of I, I don't know maybe like a send off um into the final stages of his career um he finally got to pitch in the major leagues with the phillies last season he didn't do too bad either um this this is what this drew maggie story kind of reminds me of uh from last season with mark appel um so yeah i mean as you said i really hope he does well um and this is a perfect team to get that opportunity to do well um they're hot right now they're a fun team um they're just going out there and having fun and and winning baseball games while doing it Adding Drew Maggie, who has been waiting for this opportunity for years. It's nice to see that he's going to get that opportunity with a fun team like Pittsburgh. Yeah, definitely. Everything's up for Pittsburgh right now. Yeah, it's a nice, sure. nice change. Nice change. <laughs> All righty. So um, I guess we can get into to the part where I'm going to dread talking about the most. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays are a absolute um, just wagon. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know what else to say about this team. This team is nuts. They are ridiculous. Um, they're beating up on everybody. Like, it's it's literally nobody's business. I mean, these guys are just tearing it up right now. 22 straight games with a home run for these guys as well. Your American lease eating, leading <laughs> Tampa Bay Rays. Uh Listen, I, I know Bobby, and when we did the previews, um, before the season, you and Bobby were very afraid of this Tampa team. Yeah. So I, I'm always going to forget who had uh, – did somebody pick them to win the division this year? Was um, it you? I, do, I don't you, entirely I, know. I I don't think any I, of us did, but I did think we have them pretty close. I didn't, but – I believe I had them finishing third place in the AL East. Um his, I mean, I remember we were going over the um, the over unders, and I was uh, there's no I way I was under. taking that under. Yeah, there was no way I could. I mean, and as I said before, I'm I'm very familiar with this Rays team. This team can look like absolute shit on paper. It really can, but they can go out there and win. I don't know, 105 to 110 games each and every season, and I don't understand how they do it. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, they're constantly in the running for the playoff push every single year. Um, this Rays team has me frightened. Um, I'm obviously uh, it's way too early in the season to say that they got this division locked up, especially when every everyone in this division is over 500 right now. Um, but you know they have a six game lead on the second place Orioles right now. Uh, if they keep playing the way they do, uh, there's nobody's going to catch up to them. Yeah, and you know the big problem for the Rays was after two weeks in the season when they were still undefeated, it's like, well, they haven't played anybody. They've yeah. beaten, you know, look at the teams they play. They've played the Nationals. They've played the Tigers. They've played the A's. But then it's like, well, aren't you supposed to do that? Like, the Rays exactly. are doing what good teams should be doing, beating up on bad teams. 
And we said, let's see what happens when the schedule gets harder, gets a little harder. They, I think they swept the Red Sox. And -hmm. then I know they lost two out of three to Toronto, but we'll we'll get to it later. They got a big series coming against the Astros. So that'll be, you know, we'll get to see a little bit more. Like, all right, let's see if this Rays team is really good. No, this this race team is ridiculous. Um, and I, if yep. I'm not mistaken, they're still undefeated at home. I believe so. Yeah, this pitching staff is ridiculous. It's one of the best in baseball, and it, statistically, I feel like it is the best in baseball. Yeah, they they pitch very well, and it helps that. Listen, you have one of the most exciting players in the sport, Randy mm-hmm. Rosarena, still doing this. Yeah. Still doing this. Um, it helps when you have one of the most electrifying players. And yeah, like I said, we'll see if they can keep this up. But e- even if they fall off, they're going to hang around. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to hang around. They may not win this division, but they're going to get one of those wild card spots. I-, I think as a Yankee fan, the team who I'm most scared to meet in the postseason, other than the, the Houston Astros, is the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, the Rays always give the Yankees an issue, always. And it's just, it's something that I've come to accept and learn as a Yankee fan. And I'm, it's it's looking to set up this way at the end of the year, sadly. But that's just, that's the reality of it. And this Rays team is really good. And I mean, they're only going to get better with when their injuries start coming back and everything starts working out in their favor. Um, there's no telling what this Rays team could do. Yankees and Rays meet up for the very first time the first weekend in May. Yeah. May 5th through the 7th in Tampa. So we'll yeah, see how I that mean, goes. That's, that's another thing. I mean, as a Yankee fan, I, I hate the chop, dude. The chop always gives us issues. I, I think the only thing the Yankees have going for them at uh, at the beginning of that series is Harrison Bader is set to make his return that series. Um there's obviously a Harrison Bader's not going to turn around all the Yankees issues, especially when they're meeting the Rays. But uh, hey, you never know. We'll see. I think everybody. I think they'll come back to Earth eventually. Yeah, like well, I, no, I'm not. I'm not saying they're gonna. You know, they're gonna be ten games below 500. But yeah, no, no. I I understand. I I got you. Um, I mean, after the Rays, uh, here's another team who I who I expect. I, I feel like this team is not playing up to where they should be. And that is your Los Angeles Dodgers. So I will let you take this away here, and I'll let you get into it. So, um, they took three out of four. Well, the last time I was on here, I was not feeling good at all. Mm-hmm. You know, they had lost three out of four to Arizona. I think they had lost a series. They lost a series to the Mets, which you know their bullpen got exposed. And I was telling Matt last week that you know maybe we lied to ourselves as Dodger fans that we were like okay yeah we have Mookie Betts we have Freddie Friedman we have Will Smith at the top of the order but then after that it's like eh, there's a lot of question marks you know Mm -hmm. Uh, shout out to Max Muncy he is on a tear right now and I'm so glad that he was able to shut up a lot of Dodger fans, and I'm going to go against my own team here for a second, fan base. Lots, some Dodger fans wanted him out. They wanted him DFA'd, or they wanted they wanted him DFA'd at least two weeks ago, which is That's crazy, crazy <laughs> which is crazy. And you could take a look back at that series in San Francisco. That set it off. That, that, that got him back on track after he said that he doesn't like playing there. It's cold. It's wet. It, it sucks. He doesn't like playing there. But – He's, I think, tied now for the uh, major league lead in homers with Pete Alonso. I think he has it, man. I think last night put him over the top. That's you might be right on that, but yeah. Max Muncy's starting to hit, um, and shout out to James Outman, man. Say it, say it, please. I, I was waiting for this. James Outman is a monster, dude. He's he is. Oh my gosh, he's dude. I mean, obviously, I'm on the East Coast out here, but I'm, I'm staying up and I'm watching Dodger games just to see James Outman. I'm excited for this kid, man. I, I've been, I was waiting, I was wanting to see where you were going with that, and I'm glad he, you brought him up. 
he was he's been winning over a lot of Dodger players' hearts. Listen, there was a big there was a big uh there was a big breakup when Bellinger went to Chicago because that yeah, was like everybody's fan favorite. It, that was everybody's fan favorite and you know, we grew up with Cody Bellinger. We watched him go through the minors, come up as a rookie, win MVP, All-Star games, gold gloves and all that. But then we also saw his downfall when he was batting under 200. We benched him for a playoff game, which, you know, if you would have told me that three years ago, I would have said you're crazy. But th- this is what the Dodgers do. You know, they, they I know they're off to a slow start, but this is what the front office does. They're not attached to any of these players. If they're not producing, we'll get you out of here. And they took a chance with Bellinger, and they said, you know what? We got everything we needed to out of him. You want to go get your money somewhere else, be our guest. You want to go play for a big contract, go ahead. But we have this guy in James Altman who's literally dying for a chance to get an opportunity, and he's made the most of it. He had a great spring training, and he's having a great regular season. And it just goes – it kind of – it does – phase the question of why he didn't get a maybe a couple more at bats last year when Bellinger was really struggling towards the end but listen that team was totally diff- totally different you could hide Bellinger at the bottom of the order yeah. because you had so many guys up top but James Hauptman your National League rookie of the year favorite <laughs> right now I don't give a shit I'll say it a month in dude I mean I'm I'm not going I'm not that's I'm not going against you, man. I mean, I I truly do agree right now, and I feel like his his odds have have skyrocketed now that Logan Ohapi. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the National League. I'm thinking about. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, I I still think James Outman does have a true chance at this. Uh, Jordan Walker and Corbin Carroll are the yeah. are the two uh, contenders with Outman here. But honestly, I mean. Walker's died down a little bit. He's he's kind of cooled off from his insane start to the season. Um, and I mean, we always beg, you know, the, the question's always there. What did their team do during the season? And when you think about it right now, the, the Cardinals are not looking good right now. And when you no. have the Dodgers who, hey, if the Dodgers turn this around and start winning more ball games, hey, James Outman could have a real shot. I, I truly do believe that. Yeah, and everybody was ready to crown Corbin Carroll after one week. But, you know, he's kind of come back to earth a little bit. But like I said, I, I need to see just a little bit more. And I know that sounds crazy because he's mm-hmm. he's hitting over 300 and he has seven home runs already. But mm-hmm. let, let, let's see as the season progresses if he starts slowing down a little bit. But yeah. Dodgers, it took three out of four against the Cubs. After getting completely annihilated on Friday, that was embarrassing. They 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 were getting perfect game until the eighth inning. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys you saw it where David yeah. Peralta got a hit on literally just the only reason why he got on board was because the catcher and the pitcher collided. That was the only reason. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um bullpen still scares me. They had a better weekend this year. They had a better weekend. But the, the bullpen's still kind of iffy. It still kind of scares me. The starting pitching, I, I don't know what's going on. I know Julio's had, I think, two bad starts now. Mm. Actually, he's probably he he hasn't been sharp in two. Um. Um. And then Syndergaard hasn't been off to a great start. <laughs> he's uh, zero and three, I think, with like a four ERA, but. Uh, these guys will figure it out. Tony Gonson, we're supposed to get back. He's supposed to join the team in Pittsburgh. And I'll segue into what I really want to say about this Dodgers team. Um, shout out to all the Dodgers, man. They're, they're, they're having babies left and right. <laughs> Mookie Betts is on the paternity leave. Max Muncy is on the paternity leave. Um, these guys, man. The, the, and... <laughs> They did the math. Somebody did the math, the local radio station here. They did the math of nine months. You know when nine months was? It was in July of last year. You know what July oh, was last year? <laughs> the all-star break in Los Angeles. So, uh, uh, you know, these players got linked up with their girlfriends and wives again after a long first half, did their thing, and now nine months later, here we are. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of new Dodger babies, which is which is awesome to see. So... These guys, uh, 
getting it done on the field and off. So that's that's good. <laughs> good for them. Congratulations, guys. But um, the reason why I mentioned this is because though that because you know I I I I think that's funny that they all yeah. kind of <laughs> did it at the same time. But um, Max Muncy is on the paternity leave, and that means that we're gonna call up our third prospect, third ranked prospect in our organization, Michael Bush. And I'm very excited for that because a lot of Dodger fans have wanted him up for a while now, especially with the struggles of Miguel Vargas, who dude can't hit a fastball past 93 miles an hour. That's a problem. But here we go. Michael Bush, let's see what he can do. It sucks that, and I know Muncie will be back like in a day or two, or like in three days, yeah. but Muncie, it's it's like Muncie was starting to figure it out. And now he's going to go away for a couple days. But like I said, congratulations to them. That's awesome. But I want to see Michael Bush. I want to see how this kid does. And I'm very excited to see that. Yeah, I mean, he's – I mean, it was Outman, Bush, and Vargas is who, as an outsider, um, whose I saw um, all over Dodgers Twitter uh, wanting those three guys up. Uh, They got two of them now. They're getting the third in Bush. Um, I'm excited for this kid too. Um, I really am. I've heard nothing but good things from him. Uh, I've watched I've watched tape of him in the minors. Um, he's he's solid hitter, man. He really is. And uh, I hey, you never know. Um, obviously, Muncie going away um, for a couple of days. Um, you know, it'll it'll get Bush a few plate appearances and see what he can do. Um, but I mean, I really hope the Dodgers can find a place for him on this team because I'm excited for him too. Yeah, and uh, just to continue on, and I. Can't believe I completely overblew this, but mm-hmm. shout out to Clayton Kershaw for getting his 200th career win <laughs> last Tuesday. I can't yeah. believe I missed that, but it was cool to see that he pitched a gem of a game. He, the he looked like vintage Kershaw last last week against the Mets, so that was awesome to see. You know, he was able to strike out the last guy in the seventh inning. Which, listen, Dodger fans know Kershaw got shelled in the playoffs because uh, he would sometimes be let in for too long. So when I saw Kershaw go back up, go back out there in the seventh inning, I got PTSD because I was like, Oh my God, (laughs) this guy's going to give up a three run shot again. Um, They left them in too long. They should have got him out of there. He can't do this anymore. He's not young. You know, he's not this prime anymore, but it was nice to see the King uh, get his 200th career win with the Dodgers. Third only Dodger to do that franchise history. Yeah, I mean, Kershaw continues to do what he does best. Um, Say it again. It, it just, I mean, honestly, dude, I mean, it's he he's one of those guys who I grew up watching, obviously. Um, all of us did. Um, I've always loved Kershaw from a distance. Um, yeah, I mean, he just he keeps impressing and putting up that Hall of Fame resume. He's just, he ages like fine wine, dude. He's like the guys like Verlander, Scherzer, all of them. Um, it's it, it's it's amazing to see these guys getting in an older age like Kershaw is now, um, and still producing at a level that he can right now. It's it's pretty it's pretty special to watch and see for sure. It is, and he doesn't have to be the number one option anymore, which no. that was the big problem ten years ago. It's like okay, it was Kershaw than everybody else, but now it's like you have Julio Arias, you have Dustin May. Syndergaard, hopefully he'll figure it out, and then you have Dustin yeah. May coming back. I mean, then you have Tony Gonson coming back, and then you guys got you guys got we have guys waiting in the wings like Michael Grove and uh, Bobby Miller. So that's another Dod- one Dodgers I'm excited will figure for. It. Yeah, Bobby I know. Miller, dude. I know Bobby Miller. I can't wait. I I honestly can't. Um, we we can't wait either. Yeah. We also wait. We can't wait for Diego Cartaya, but yeah, Will Smith has been so good that <laughs> we can't call him up. And he's in double A right now, so he wouldn't be ready anyways. But yeah, uh, no, we might be using yeah. him in a trade piece for Otani, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. That's a conversation yeah, who, for another day. Who the hell knows what's going on with the the Angels nowadays with Otani? That's just a dumpster fire over there. Um, but obviously, um, those three teams are our lookouts. Um, and now we have some we have some series coming up that are going to be very exciting to watch. We have the Rays and Astros, who we kind of dipped uh, we dipped into a little bit. I think this series is going to prove uh, if the Rays are for real or not. Um, how they can hold up against 
um, the Astros, who is the powerhouse of the league, obviously. Um, and then you have the Pirates and Dodgers. You know, that, that I think that's going to be a very fun series to watch. Um, I think the most exciting coming up is uh, Mexico City. Padres and Giants Saturday and Sunday of this week. I think I think all these three series are going to be amazing to watch. Um, I'm definitely going to tune in. Um, I'm excited for these three. Yeah, um, you said you're definitely going to tune in. Me, uh, kind of hesitate. Let, let's see how <laughs> the, you know. You might have to take the <laughs> TV away from me, but and then put it on the channel. But no, I'll, I'll tune in. Um, <laughs> nice to see. MLB going out on the road again. I know COVID kind of screwed everything up with yeah. the travel and stuff. So, um, you know, Mexico City, they're getting um, a couple baseball games. And I know London's getting some in June with the uh, Cardinals and Cubs. So that'll be fun. So, yeah. uh, And then, listen, the Astros have kind of gotten off to a slow start. I don't want to see are. a World Series hangover because they are kind of missing some dudes, including okay. Altuve. But. You know our two our two teams that were in the fall classic last year, kind of off to slow starts this year. Yeah, they are. Um, I mean, I'm not going to complain, especially from the AL side of things. <laughs> um, whenever I can see the Astros kind of go in a slump, I'm jumping for joy. I really don't care. <laughs> I don't um, think you're alone with that. No, <laughs> but yeah, um, I, 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 kind of building on what you said about Mexico City going on the road again for MLB. I think. I mean, I remember watching the London series, uh, Yankees and Red Sox. That was one of the best memories I've had as a baseball fan in recent history. It's I think the Padres and Giants are going to be um, just as special to watch. All right, Mello, I want to hear it here. Um, obviously, the Pirates and Dodgers are coming off uh, going into a series together. How do you think that's going to go? I'm very curious to hear your answer. You know, I think there's a lot of – I think momentum's a real thing at sports. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, they took three out of four after getting crushed on Friday. So I think they're going to roll into Pittsburgh and take two out of three. They'll lose the day game, but I think they'll get the first two. And there right. goes my – there's your Dodger bias for the day. <laughs> no, I, I mean, for me, it's – it's so hard going up against the Pirates right now, especially in Pittsburgh. But as you said, I feel like the Dodgers do have the momentum right now. They're, they're starting off the season not where they want it. And I feel like this past series is kind of what shifted the tide for them. Getting them <clears throat> back on track, going into Pittsburgh, I also think they're going to take two out of three um, against the Pirates. Now I feel Oof. like... I feel like this series coming up with the Rays and Astros, I feel like this is going to be a, a very fun one, and I'm excited to hear your prediction on this one. Oh, man. Uh, you know, I really, really want to say a sweep for <laughs> Tampa. I really do. But I know I said a minute ago that the Astros got off to a slow start, but they did sweep the Braves over the weekend, so that was impressive. Yeah. Um, damn. You know, I'm, I'm going to go raise two out of three. I think that's the safe pick, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to go with that. All right. Um, for me, Yankee bias is going to come into this. <laughs> um, well, which I... one? Exactly. Yeah, you could go either way. Um, I don't I actually don't hate the Rays as a Yankee fan. I really don't. Um, I'm very impressed with what they do year in and year out, and I, I respect the hell out of it. Um, but I feel like it's going to start to come down to earth a little bit for the Rays here. And I feel like this is the series that it's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to say Houston takes two out of three, um, but it's not going to come easy. Um, this series is going to be extremely fun to watch. Um, and I feel like it's going to be neck and neck at each other constantly. Um, but it's, Hey, I, I really don't care if I'm wrong or not. Um, I'm just excited to watch this series. I really am. Yeah, absolutely. I think any baseball <laughs> fan should be excited. These could be playoff teams coming down the oh, road. Yeah. You never know. This could be a playoff matchup. Exactly. And especially with these two powerhouses. I, I mean, I, I really want to see Randy go off against the Astros. I really do. Hey, there we go. That's what we need. Anytime, that's the new rule here. Anytime anybody says, Randy, I'm just going to do this. Anytime. There we go. That's the hey, new rule now. Perfect. I love I it. I just came up with it now. 
All righty. Um, I, I think that's pretty much all that we have to cover today. Um, unless you have any final thoughts, Mello? Uh, just Dodgers just continue to weather the storm a little bit, get everybody back, you know, um, that's about it. Lakers Kings just continue to do your thing. As a Yankee fan, I can get behind you on that statement. All right. <laughs> All right, Mello. I'll see you in the next one, man. All right. I'll see you. Adios.